Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. In today's video, we'll be talking about a web-based tool that you should know about like right now. I mean, if you're into uh, texture creation and maybe you like creating maps and you don't have something like substance and all of those stuff without license, of course, you can obviously come through and use this tool. And I'm talking about no other tool than the C Petri tool that is available on GitHub. I'm going to put links in the description so that you'll be able to find that and use it. And so once you come over to this website, the first things which you're going to see is just these uh, two stuff, right? And so with the two of them, you'll be able to generate textures if you want to generate textures and you'll be able to use this. It says normal map, but you can use it to create your normal, your displacement, your, ambi your, your ambient occlusion and so on and so forth, right? You can also check the lighting condition of this depending on what you want to achieve at the end of the day. So we're just going to start off with looking at the texture creation or the texture generator and see how this works. So once you click on this button, it takes you over to this place. And the first thing which you're going to notice is a noise. And by default, a lot of us make use of noise for actually creating so many, so many textures. And the cool thing with this is that you find the different types of noise that exist here, actually three basic type of noise that exist here. And you can use this noise for basically anything you want. So let's say we'll go over and change this all the way to white. And we can still decide to say we don't want to use a parallel noise. We want to use a turbulence. And you're going to notice we're having that there. And to each of these that we're changing, I want you to also notice that we'll, the settings are also changing. So it doesn't mean that the settings are static. Yeah. So the settings are changing and you can simply play with this, allow the web to actually calculate it play with this and get a better result for what you want to do. So once you have gone ahead to create something like this, you can simply come through and select the size which you want. And just before you hit the download button, if you want to give it a name, you can choose what name you want, what file size you want. PNG seems to be the best most times. And maybe in case you want to compress it, you definitely can use JPG. And so once that's done, you can go ahead and download that and use that for whatever thing you want to do. But the noise is not the only kind of texture that you can generate here. There are various texture types that you can generate here. And I would really like it if you guys can come through, come over to this page and try these things for yourself. If you want to create a texture based on gradient, of course, you can still do that here. You can just simply click on this button here. And within the gradient, you can choose what type of gradient you want. If you want a linear gradient, if you want the radial gradient, whatever you want. And the same way you can change the color of the textures for the noise is also the same way you can change the color of the textures for the gradient. And once you go ahead and simply click, you can add another uh, node. And once you double click or once you just simply click on the middle, you'll be able to change what color you want uh, the node to have. OK, so this is how you can generate your textures here. And it has some sort of style compared to other things that you might have used. Definitely, if you want to just simply do a quick tile, this might be the best place to do your quick tiles. And for free, you can just do this real quick, download it, check the size which you want. Give it a name and go ahead and download it and use it for whatever project you want. Now, let's talk about the next thing, which is the normal map generator. So we talked about this earlier that there is a texture generator and there's a normal map generator, right? So if we come over here or if you click this button, it opens up a normal map generator here. And for the first times, once you just get this open, what you're going to see is the normal. It does not just create your normal map. It also creates the displacement map, the ambient occlusion, and also the specularity. And a very good way for you to check these things is if you come through to this part where you have the 3D object spinning, Actually, you can still decide to change this to whatever thing you want. So we can choose a sphere, you can choose a plane, very amazing things. To navigate around here, just simply click and drag and you'll be able to move around. We can also turn on environment, guys, in case you want to see how this does when there's an environment. All right. So how do you check if these things are existent, right? So we have this displacement. Once I go ahead and turn this off, you notice that there is a change in the object, right? So there is a displacement count here and you can go ahead and increase this displacement count. If you want to know how to work with displacement map, there is a video in the channel, actually two different videos in the channel that talks about displacement. Links are going to be in the description so you can go ahead and check them out for yourself. 
other things that you can do here is you can choose to select whatever map you want and change the strength of the map right so if i go over to the specularity i can turn down the strength and you can see that i'm having that feedback directly here i can also choose to turn down the mean i can also choose to turn off the fall off or turn it back on and also turn down or turn up the range and this makes a lot of sense that you can get what you want or you can basically do what you want even without having an application installed on your pc if you're actually a fan of web-based app there is a ton of web-based uh, apps that we've covered on the channel you should go ahead and check those out hopefully once got uh, makes its way to uh, using browsers of course we're also going to cover that as well so your big question is this how do i actually create mine so what we're going to do is we'll go ahead let's actually make a duplicate of this and we're going to go ahead and click here or you can just simply drag and drop to add up our own image so we're just using the very basic image which we've used for a lot of things and allow it to load directly here let's see how this works what we can do now is we don't want to see this in this form so we're going to simply change this it says plain so this is a little bit of a, a bug right so we can do this let's go back to sphere and change it back to plane all right so i'm just going to scroll all the way in uh the displacement seems to be a bit too much so if you turn it off you can see what we're having but we want this displacement so i'm just going to turn it down just a little bit about 0 0.3 all right let's actually dial that in 0 0.3 right so we have this displacement going on here you can also load up your own obj files just in case you want to use obj files directly here and now the next thing which we want to do is we want to also see how this would uh perform right we want to see how this is going to perform if we choose to attach uh, a diffuse map so the diffuse which we're going to use is obviously the image which we imported in earlier so what we're going to do now is just simply click on load select this object and boom you can see it here in case you're working with this and you don't get to see this probably if your environment is turned on right so sometimes if these things don't work because you duplicate just turn them back off and turn them back on and you can get them to work right so if i turn off the environment we can see this if i turn on the environment we don't see it right so we can just turn this off so that we can be able to see what we have if you think that the displacement or the normal map is a bit too sharp you can simply blow it down a little bit right let's just drop this back to zero if you also think that the displacement is a little bit too sharp we can also turn this down and you can still punch in a bit of contrast if you want to get very sharp objects the same thing for the ambient occlusion you can still drop it down a little bit we can also uh, just punch up the strength just a very tiny bit and for this as well we can drop the range just a little bit all right so let's say we're comfortable with this and we're happy with what we have the next thing which we want to do is to go ahead and render this so the next thing which we want to do now is just simply uh, make sure that we have everything which we want selected and then we're just going to hit on all so once you click on all it's going to download the entire thing but once you click on just simply download it's just going to download one of them right so uh just before i leave this particular app and show you some other thing is for example once you click on the batch what happens in the batch mode is you load up a couple of images it automatically generates these things for you and then you can go ahead and just simply download all of them at the same time so let's download this now and see what we get All right, guys, so let's go ahead and open up Maya and run this through and see how this actually works. So we were not able to use Marmoset for some reason. I, I think it just got crashing, probably because of the recording program or so. But there you go. Uh, we have it here in Maya and the workflow is basically the same, right? I'm going to put links to the video where you can check all, those, all of these things out. So uh, here I have Maya opened. And what I want to do now, I'm just going to close the outliner, is create a, a plane. So we're going to use a simple plane. At the same time, if you want to check out how these things are made, uh, maybe how you can use your displacement, there is also a link 
in the description that will take you to the video that talks about displacement, right? So we have this here. Next thing we need to do is open up the Hypershade. And depending on whatever app you're working on, this is similarly the same, basically the same. So what we want to do now is to bring in our displacement map. All right, so I'm just going to drag this and come over here and drag and drop. Bring in the specular as well and uh, also bring in the normal although i don't really think we need the normal map right now but let's just get that in obviously i don't think we need the ambient occlusion right so i'm just going to pump this all the way up and also bring up an ai standard surface so because we're going to render using arnold probably because it ships with maya right so let's simply use that we're going to just simply go ahead and reposition these things I don't necessarily see the need for us to use a specular, so I'm just going to keep that by the side, also for the normal, but then... So for this, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead, right? We can pick the alpha because this is definitely black and white, and it's a grayscale, right? Or you can pick the color, depending on what you want to do, you can plug that there. You can still choose the red channel and plug that there as well, but for this, we're going to just simply use the alpha, plug the alpha directly to that place, and also use the middle mouse button. So I'm just going to use the middle mouse button to just click, drag, and drop directly here. That is how you can assign things. Or you can just uh, hold down, right click here, and go over to assign, and simply assign uh, the AI standard surface, right? So the next thing which we need to do is go over to uh, your object shape, right? So this is called plane, so we can go over to the object shape here. Over here where we have Arnold. I'm going to go ahead and change this subdivision type to cat clack and turn up the iteration so it gets subdivided by let's say four and that's pretty much it next thing which i need to do is remember earlier when we started out you see the displacement here is set to uh, 0 0.3 or 0 0.33 right so to get exactly what you have here you have to also set that displacement uh thingy here so, but for Maya, you have to set it one decimal away or one, one, one number away, I guess. So, I'm just going to set it like 0 0.033, something like that. So, once I have this all set up, I think it's also, it also makes sense to actually bring in, I think it makes sense to actually bring in the, the main texture, right? So, I think it makes a lot of sense to bring in the main texture. So, I'm just going to drag this main texture, bring it right here. And what I'm going to do with this it simply connect this to uh, the base color, right? So I'm just going to connect this to the base. And by default, if you just come through and press 6 on your keyboard, you should be able to see this in your viewport. So let's go over to Arnold. Let's throw in a dome light so we can see. And just press the play button. And so once we press the play button, Arnold should actually start up. So I'm just going to uh, bring this over from the screen. Arnold will start up and there you go. You can see what we have directly here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just turn a little bit so you can see we have this displacement going on around here. Pretty cool. So uh, if you want to also attach the normal map, there are also, you can simply attach the normal map if you want. Uh, there is a node for the normal map directly here. So if I just simply drag this over to this part, there is a node for the normal map. You can connect the normal map directly here or you can use the bump map. So if I just press the bump, you can simply use the bump 2D to run your connection directly from, uh, I think we're using this, directly from here over to the normal map. Now, the reason why you're running through this bump map is so that you can simply switch this to either bump uh, the tangent space up the tangent space normal or the object space normal that's actually the main reason why you're running this through here and also you can be able to control the depth at which you want so you can make it a bit inner or a bit outer depending on what you're going for that's how you can do that the same thing happens if you want to also connect your specularity you can see we have a specularity here so we can just simply pick this and connect the specular directly here because the specular is a black and white information color. So that's why we're using the alpha to actually drive that there. So once you have that going for you, you can simply uh, move around and there you go. If you want to get more, let's say you want this to be a little bit higher. 
uh, let's say you're not so satisfied with how much displacement you want you have here you can have this object selected all right so let's go ahead and just simply pause this because it's slowing down the pc uh, pause this and let me make these all the way to six this is this might be a bit high right and press the playback button okay another thing that you might have also experienced when you're doing things like this so if i go ahead and make this all the way to eight and press the playback button you might have also noticed that your displacement might be a bit jagged right now the reason why your displacement are jagged or is jagged is because uh the iteration or the subdivision is a little bit low right so if you go ahead and now that we've increased this from three to eight we can simply increase our subdivision to probably let's say six all right let's just do six i think six is a lot of numbers all right so we can uh, push this all the way up to six and now you're going to see we're having way more details and all of this are very sharp edges are showing up all right and so this is basically how this works so we've seen the c petri and also we've seen how you can get these maps directly from here all of the map you've generated from here we've seen how you can get them from here and take them over to to maya or whatever 3d app you have and use them directly there so if you want to go ahead and let's say not generate things like this you can simply choose not to download them right choose not to download them and for the ones that you want you can simply just download them and use them for whatever project you are working on and at any point in time you can always come over to this website and do all of your texture generation and if you're feeling happy you can simply hit the donate button and donate to this software you know to keep it online for other artists to also benefit from it and so this is all about it guys i would like to know what your thoughts are about this in the comment section below do you prefer more web-based app or would you prefer more desktop based app of course they all have their pros and cons which actually uh, makes them either better in some cases or worse in some cases tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section below and also keep an eye open for a giveaway which we're planning to do at the end of the month and if you like this video simply give a like and don't forget to share with your friends and if you're new here it would be awesome if you can just hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you wouldn't miss any video we'll upload next and until i see you guys next time with a tutorial review updates free friday tips and tricks things like this Peace.